It goes like this. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This is a fitting verse for a fitting occasion and it was indeed fitting that someone as supernatural as Jesus Christ would have a supernatural entry into our world with his supernatural conception followed by a supernatural exit from our world with a supernatural resurrection and Paul wants to remind us and remind Timothy he says Timothy my successor as I am ready to put off my tent as I'm becoming old I want you to make sure you don't forget that and you don't compromise about that that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel because Paul was worried about Timothy you see there was a trend in the days of Timothy people wanted some new fantasy they didn't want to continue with the old truth people don't like the old truth they say give me something new this was true in the days of Timothy and this is true today in our day people would like to add something new in those days came up people like Hymenius and Philetus says in 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 18 who concerning the truth have strayed saying that the resurrection is already past and overthrow the faith of some these people said what do you mean the resurrection after all it's just a thought you see they mystified the resurrection uh, by doing that they took away the whole concept of resurrection but in reality Paul says to Timothy and to us watch out lest anybody should cheat you with mystification alteration modification confusing you about the fact that indeed this is a real fact remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel in that one verse we need about 10 sermons and I'll give you just a short one because in it is compacted many facts first of all it speaks about his name Jesus Christ the man who came to save Jesus is the same one who's the Christ the Messiah the anointed the divine one and then he says after all he was just a man like us of the seed of David as divine as he was he became a man like every one of us went through the same trials like us and then he died because it implies that he died in that verse how else could he be raised from the dead Jesus Christ died a real death there are many cults who would like to say that Jesus did not die oh no he did die you see the piercing of his hands was real the piercing of his side was real his heart was pierced blood and water gushed out of him and when they took him down from that cross and laid him in that rock home tomb and left there they made sure that he was dead as they covered him with linen and rolled a big stone over him and left him alone until that third day sun rose up before that third day sun was risen Jesus Christ rose from the dead and then with a body a real physical body he walked out from that grave this is the truth that we need to remember who would dare to alter that truth a truth that has many 
effects and many consequences. So today, I'm going to try and make it brief, and I would like to bring before you and let us both consider, together consider, two major facts about the resurrection. First, that the resurrection has an effect on every fact, including the gospel. And the second major thing I'd like to bring before you is that the resurrection has also an effect on us. So two facts, only two facts, and I'm reminded to make my sermons brief as I remember this visiting pastor who once addressed the congregation with those words. He said, you see, I know it is my job to preach and your job to listen. But just in case, just in case, if you finish before me, please let me know. <laughs> so I wouldn't dare let you finish before me. I'd like you to, let's finish it together, folks. So I'll start with the first major fact that indeed the resurrection does have an effect on every single truth, including the gospel. To begin with, it is clear that the resurrection of our Lord was a visible proof that there is an afterlife. You see, Jesus Christ went to that afterlife and he came back from it. So we are certain that there is an existence after death. Somebody having fear that whether or not you're going to exist after death, remember that Jesus Christ died and then he rose back from the dead. Yes, there is an existence after death. And we have no doubt, we believers, that there is a paradise of joy awaiting us. Jesus went to it and came back from it. Although he left us again and went up to his father, but he stayed 40 days around here on earth. And that those 40 days give us the certainty that there is indeed life after death. He said in John chapter 14, verse 2, In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you will be also. In John 16, 16, he says, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me because I go to my Father. He returned from the dead. This is a pledge to us that after death, we will also exist, and we need to rejoice in that fact. It's not only existence for us after death, we who believe in Christ, but it's an existence in a glorified body. You see, Jesus Christ did not just come back as a spirit. He says in Luke 24, verse 39, Behold my hands, my feet, it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has no flesh and bones as you see me have. Later on in that same chapter of Luke 24, he says, while they still did not believe for joy and amazement, he said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Jesus came back with a body, and so shall we, shall we, with a real body, a body that's glorified. To Thomas, he said, Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but be a believing. It was a superior body. It was a real body. It was a body that never knew, now was not affected by pain, hunger, thirst, or weariness. It's a body, and because it's a body that was raised superiorly, so shall we be raised superiorly. And one day it shall be said that, uh, about our own mortal body. Those words in 1 Corinthians 15, 43, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Is there anyone here who's troubled about what will happen to you after death? This is the answer. Grip on to that fact that Jesus died and then he rose from the dead and if you believe in Jesus so will you do the same thing the best 
help for people afraid on their deathbed is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Another effect that the resurrection has is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ confirms Christ's claims and his mission. He said in Mark 14, destroy this body and in three days I will raise it up. Well, there it is. This is the proof of his raised body. His body was raised just as he said it will be. And then he said, it shall be a sign, my resurrection. In Luke 11, verse 30, he says, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so should the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth and should then come forth to life again. There it is, the sign fulfilled. He said, I will make my resurrection as a sign like Jonah. And here it is, fulfilled as he is. He claimed that he was without sin. And the resurrection proved that he was without sin. You see, death could not hold him. Indeed, he carried our sins by imputation and delivered them to the other side of death. Having done that offload of him, himself, there was no sin on himself to hold him with. Death could not hold him. And the fact that he rose from the dead proves that indeed he was without sin. John 8, 46 says, which of you convicts me of sin? Resurrection of Jesus Christ proved that he was indeed the son of God, the sinless son of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 4 says, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. We can worship him today and say, son of David, you're indeed the divine Messiah, son of God, the sinless son of God, who died and rose from the dead. And the third effect that Jesus Christ's resurrection will have is that his sacrifice was indeed accepted. There was acceptance of his sacrifice. You see, if he had to pay any further, he would not have risen from the dead. The fact that he rose from the dead proves that the sacrifice was paid in full. See, the law can only exact the penalty once. It has exacted it from Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ when he rose from the dead had no more penalty to pay his life his existence had no more liability and so shall every single believer in Jesus Christ we have no more penalty we have been paid for our debt has been satisfied once for all no liabilities for us and if Satan comes and tries to trick you and tells you that you still have to pay, tell him no, because Jesus is alive, he rose from the dead, and because I believe in him, I have no further payments to make. Romans chapter 8 verse 33 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, and rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God to intercede for us. Jesus Christ paid and he paid it completely, and I have no more further payments to be made. And the resurrection also has another effect, is that it was, it was a guarantee for the body resurrection of all the people that belong to Christ. You see, as Christ's people and Christ are one, as Adam and his people are one, we are also Christ, and we are in Christ, and we become one. You see, God made it that those who belong in Christ, to Christ and Christ himself are one unit. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that sleep, everyone in his own order, Christ the first fruit, and afterward they that are Christ at his coming. We rejoice in the fact that those who went before us, believing in Christ, their spirits are there enjoying Christ. But guess what? Their body parts, their mortal parts are in divine custody until they are reanimated and made back alive and they with us will be rejoicing in the adoption as sons of God, both body and spirit. This is something to rejoice about. But for now, I think we need to remember that our spirits have been raised from the dead. We've been raised from the dead. We've been made new creations. So therefore, let us begin living as new creations. Creations that belong to Christ, citizens of heaven. 
we should not let our minds be taken by the rotten smell and pursuits of this world we need to begin flying upward like new birds young birds who are freed from their cages looking upward and aiming upward because our spirits have been risen and soon our bodies will also be risen and then the resurrection does have also an effect on the gospel itself the gospel itself has been affected by the resurrection you see the resurrection of Christ tells us that the gospel is the gospel of a living Savior we do not send sinners and if there is a sinner here in our midst who is not saved we don't send you poor sinner to a crucifix we do not send you to an image a dead image of a dead man and we say go ahead and worship him nor do we send you to a little baby Jesus who is nursed by a mother no we send you to a living risen from the dead Jesus Christ we send you to someone who has the keys of death and hell in fact he is right now calling anyone who's still not sure of his or her salvation he says come unto me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest he is the powerful he is the living Christ who rose from the dead and he controls all destinies and those who come to him are assured that he will give them eternal life it says in hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 therefore he's able also to save them to the uttermost that come to god by him seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them sinner we invite you to come to a living christ not a dead christ not a weak christ not a hanging on the cross christ and not a baby christ we invite you to come to a powerful christ he's able he can do it and because he rose from the dead he can really do much more now that he's alive than we can do what he could do before he rose from the dead jesus is alive and he can free you and he can free you completely and he can free you to the uttermost people think that they need to help jesus in their salvation what a what a blasphemy if we think for a moment like that jesus didn't need us on the cross he didn't need us when he rose from the dead. Why should he need us to help him save us? Come and receive full, complete salvation from a risen, powerful, and living Christ. Instead of being a sinner destined to spend eternity in hell, you can leave this place having the same righteousness, exactly the same righteousness as Jesus Christ himself. That's right. This is no exaggeration because he closes us with his exact same righteousness. And you can there say, my promises are that there is now no condemnation to all those who are in Christ. Whosoever believes in him is not condemned because Christ lives. That promise has become real. And then... And then because he's alive, he can guarantee me my salvation forever. You see, if he was not alive, I could wonder who's going to continue giving me the guarantee. But he is alive. Romans chapter 6 verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Believer in Christ, death has no more dominion over you. You may slip in sin, but you'll never go back and become in bondage to sin. You may sometimes falter, but you will never become what you used to be before you got saved. Death has no more power over you. Satan has no more power over you. Sin has no more power over you. You've been freed and freed forever by a living Christ. And you are guaranteed by his own words that no one can pluck you out of his hand. You have become his sheep. And he says in John chapter 10 verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. A risen Christ, the resurrection impacts, has an effect on every single truth, including the gospel. Second major point I wanted to make, and I'll be brief about that. 
the resurrection of Jesus Christ has an effect on us right now. It does have an effect on us right now if we remember it. That's why Paul says to Timothy, remember. Remember, Timothy. I want you to remember, Timothy, that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. You say, how can we forget that? Are you sure you don't forget it? I want to tell you what will happen if you remember it always. If you remember that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, I want to guarantee you that all your troubles will be over. That's right. All your troubles will be over. That's all we need for us to solve all our problems. Are you tried with sin? Jesus Christ rose from the dead for your justification. Are you harassed by Satan? Jesus Christ is alive to be your advocate and your intercessor. Do you have infirmities? Jesus Christ is here to show his strength on your behalf. Are you afraid of death? Jesus Christ is on the other side, just what we watched right here, to grab you by the hand and help you through the Jordan chilly water. Are you suffering? Jesus Christ has suffered. And he's ready to sympathize, to feel with you, to understand you, and to comfort you in the midst of any suffering you're going through. What is your trouble? I don't care what it is. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, if you remember it, is the solution for all your trouble. Listen, if you remember that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he's alive, and he's full of power, full of love, full of sympathy, has experienced all your trials, is fully able to assist you, then your trouble will be resolved. That's why Paul says, Timothy, I want you to remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David is raised from the dead. This will be the momentum for you, Timothy, not only to preach it, but to live it, to be empowered by it, and to go on serving no matter what the circumstances are. I want to tell you, in the midst of whatever trial you're going, in the midst of whatever despairing moment you may experience, and we will have those moments in our lives as Christians, you will be able, if you remember that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, according to my gospel, if you remember that, you can then say with Micah, in Micah chapter 7, verse 8, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, when I fall, I shall arise, I shall arise when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I know I have a living Savior who will always lift me up in whatever circumstance. And last, in closing, if we remember that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, I tell you, we will then trust him more with matters of the church. That's right, the church. Sometimes we worry about the church. There aren't too many people in the church today. Oh, I don't think there are too many people getting saved today in the church. Oh, I wonder if the church is going to continue to exist. Don't worry. There is someone who is holding the church, and we need to build that habit as we remember that Jesus Christ rose from the dead to come and trust him with matters of the church in prayer. That's right, to talk to him about his own church. When Jesus Christ was crucified, how many members of the church were around him? I want to tell you, they all forsook him. Every single disciple forsook him. There was only John standing there with Mary. They all left. But Jesus Christ single-handedly won the greatest victory on the cross and single-handedly rose from the dead and single-handedly came to restore his church to a new fresh start jesus christ is still the same yesterday today and forever and matters are not as bad as they were once upon a time so we need to learn to trust jesus christ and to bring all things back to his hands and say lord as you have taken care of the church in the past you are now the living christ who can and will take care of your church today as you've done it before. The prince of this world has a great sway on this world, doesn't it? It grieves us to see how the world is dwindling from bad to worse. But I want to tell you, every day we hear reports of people slipping through the, 
through the clutches of the enemy and coming into the living Christ kingdom and being saved every day we hear of reports of salvation that alone should keep us going that there is a living Christ who's completing the program and we're part of that program and we need to remind him about that let us remember and follow the lead of our living victorious master he has won the victory we don't need to win it anymore just follow his lead and he is very near in fact he's right here he's right here in this in this room right now and he wants to touch your infirmity I'm asking you today to renew your confidence in a living Christ to remember that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead Jesus Christ of the seed of David is alive right here in our midst I don't know where your confidence is I don't know what level your confidence is I don't know if you had ever a confidence in Christ I don't know if you got saved before or not but today he's inviting you he says I'm alive and I can do today the same and beyond of what you need me to do all you need to do is come and be rescued from whatever condition you are in whatever trouble you're going through whatever doubt is creeping onto your mind Christ is risen from the dead to solve those problems for you and me let's bow our heads before the Lord where do these words find you today are you saved good for you perhaps your confidence has dwindled perhaps you had some testy moments where you wondered if he's there for you he is renew this confidence today and tell him Lord Lord I want to remember that you rose from the dead and I want to live according to that today tomorrow remind me of it day after tomorrow keep me being reminded of it until the day when I see you face to face Lord in order for me to live a victorious life and if you're not saved and you're still wondering I want to tell you this same Christ who saved millions of people wants to save someone today if you just but listen to him and believe in him receive from him you don't have to do anything he has done it completely all you have to do is come to him as a sinner and come back come out of here as a king you come to him as someone destined for judgment and hell and you leave wearing the perfect robe of the perfect righteousness of a perfect Christ right now he wants to exchange this with you all you have to do is come to him as you are and he will dress you as he is if you've done that if you've renewed your confidence today with him or if you started new confidence with him today please speak with me speak to your pastor speak to someone about it hold on to a hand next to you and tell someone next to you say i've renewed my confidence in christ today just do it right now as a witness that indeed you have done this father we thank you this morning that you brought us to this beautiful wonderful remembrance